Hi everyone, welcome to Dark Marketing. I'm your host, Big Dom, and this video is about SEO Autopilot. So I know a lot of you have been looking forward to this one, So and let's get into it, because this is a very solid product, and there's things that you need to recognize about what's going to be involved running this project logistically. This you need a dedicated system. It's not going to run a campaign in 24 hours or 48 hours like Money Robot. The average campaign takes about four to five days, and that's because it takes its time in some of the processes involved in terms of creating the accounts necessary to make the post and then responding. Now, you have some control over some of those adjustments, but I found in the course of the campaigns that I've run that you know after the first day of running i generally can shut it off overnight and then the following day start it back up again and that may happen one or two days and then it generally will run straight through after that once the posting process really starts to amp up and it starts to move through the different types of platforms that it's going to post you might think about this as kind of like uh, money robot on steroids but it's a little bit broader in the types of platforms that it can post to so let's get started everything starts at the beginning and the beginning starts with the pricing and the purchasing they do offer a seven day free trial to test the software out sixty seven dollars monthly a hundred and sixty for three months and of course my always choice is to take a lifetime license with any of these products. It's always the best bang for your buck, and you're never going to spend more than that amount of money. And, you know, in my case, I have two licenses with them. I am currently not on their affiliate program, but hopefully by the time I post this video, I'll have the affiliate link in the description below. This is a worthwhile product, and I want to share briefly some of my experiences with you the logistics involved and that the differences as opposed to some of the other softwares that we cover in this channel because with this software you're gonna find you can get about 20,000 backlinks comfortably okay and you're going to be able to get a little bit of higher ranking DR value sites and like I said, it's broader, it's a, it's a more powerful tool in the sense that not only with the number of platforms and a more diversity than something like a money robot, but uh, a real detailed control of the postings where you're going to make multiple entries. Another nice thing about this product is it's going to help us along. It's not going to let you be able to run the software and without something being complete and when it's not it will message us and give us the opportunity to fill in the blanks so it's pretty easy to follow in that regard now in this video I want to take the basic setup approach so you get familiar and we'll do a separate video on the wizard but you know I, my feeling is if you look at the and learn the wizard aspect first you start to you know shape your paradigm with the software and I think if you learn this aspect first and then look at how the wizard aspect works, you you see the the differences and and the control that you have in the full setup process. Not really a whole lot different. I which is why I don't really like the wizard for the most part. It's okay, but I prefer to do my things with much greater detail. Now, before we get started, like every software we have basic settings that we're going to have to deal with because this software is going to require proxies and if you're using Xevil you're going to need proxies for Xevil okay and so what we want to take a look at in this dialogue and our submissions look six is a high number if I, I turn my things down to two here because if it doesn't make it in two, it's not going to make it. It's just going to be wasting time and resources. Okay? Proxies. Yes. Use proxies. The type of proxies you're going to use here are HTTPS proxies. If you're going to be running this regularly, I recommend that you get at least 30 proxies for this. Okay? And then 
And it also, it's got a nice little test proxies tool. So anytime your proxies aren't working, it's going to tell you. So that's always a, a good thing to know. Third-party APIs. If you use third-party capture, which is you're going to need with this. And my recommendation to make this run is that you use a uh, third-party capture. And XEvil is the only standalone software that you can use with this. And all we have to do to configure that is to add this host IP address in here. We can also set this to our default and then let it fall back to the paid service and 2Capture is extremely cheap. It'll go a very long way for you. Okay. Spinner. Now in here, oh, I'll have to gray that out. Here is my spin rewriter that I have my license, my API key and in here set and we've got level settings that we can change here. You can use Word AI, Spinner Chief, and Spinner.com. I'm not really familiar with those. Spin Rewriter is really on the top of my list. I'm sure Word AI is very good because of the AI. I'll probably have to go back and take a look at that. Just for this software, might be worth it. I had that and I canceled it. But let's move on. Content Source. I still have a license for Article Forge. I have it in here, but I'm not using that to create content with that. That's for the guys who just try to jam in bulk tons of, you know, pre-created blogs that, you know, not... Look, I found like some of these things like Article Forge, even though they've all gotten better with AI, you got to get in... You, you, you fall into a pattern with them. And that's why I like to kind of mix my things up and create my articles myself. And of course, I use ChatGPT. Now, Indexer, I don't use any Indexer service because when I'm done at the end of my uh, campaign, I'm going to export my URLs and use GSA uh, Search Engine Indexer to do my actual indexing. You, get it, you can really get into trouble by using these indexers because they're going to get your all your backlinks indexed very rapidly. And suddenly having 20,000 backlinks appear overnight is a red flag to search engines like Google. It's not going to affect you in a positive way. Like everything, you need to fit into your ecosystem. You have to grow into it. You can't plant seeds and expect to have a full crop the next day. Google knows something is wrong. So, you know, the, the better approach initially is use no indexing and let some of the stuff get indexed just naturally on its own, which it will. And then you supplement that with GSA indexer. Now, that really covers that. But if you're not, you know, up with that yet or have a copy, no worries. Run without the indexer. You'll, you will have a much better success rate in terms of your backlinking. Now, this is the output from a campaign that when it completed some of the platforms, it just sort of shows this basic thing. And it shows the running tasks here when they were running and all of the links. But we can click view submitted URLs here at the end of the campaign. And we could take this and copy this out and put it into a text file and then run that through an indexer or indexing service separate and apart from the running of this software. Okay, so now that we've basically got that, you know, we have some other tools here like the diagram editor, but you don't really want to get ahead of yourself with some of these things because, you know, that's an advanced topic. And what you want to do is take advantage of the many diagrams that come prepackaged with this. Also, all of the posting resources are prepackaged, and this software updates almost once a week at least. And so it's always keeping a, a very current list of uh, resources available for backlinking. Now, if you're new to this channel, and this is the first video you've ever watched on this subject, and you don't know what proxies are, let me just give a quick, quick review there. We go to the proxies. You'd have to check use proxies here. And you see this? This is a list of proxies. I can show you this because these are no longer in use. They're dead, so uh, the they're not usable. But what we would do is just, we've got it. The They come in a format where you get the IP address, a port, your username, and a password. 
And then what you would do is you would take these proxies and paste them into here and hit save. And we can test this because we're going to see that it, they're going to fail because these are not live proxies. And you can see I'm getting all X's here and that's because invalid proxies will be removed. Okay? So just so you understand the process. Now, what is a proxy? Those proxies are IP addresses that you use to filter your request through. And that's so you don't get banned because obviously when you're making high volumes of automated postings, the easiest way to be detected for that is by doing it all from a single IP address. Now, I use Storm Proxies. I'm not an affiliate. There's not going to be a link in here in the video, at least not today. But uh, they're who I use for HTTPS proxies. So I just wanted to touch on that briefly before we begin to, to start going through a setup. Now, one thing I want to be clear about is that this is a more involved product. If you already have tried Money Robot or use that, this is just a significant step up. And what you want to do with these softwares that have much more complexity or dialog boxes and options to configure, SEO Autopilot, GSA Search Engine Ranker, you really need to spend a little time just tinkering around and going through all of the options. This company also has its own video series and a number of tutorials on their website. They are both good and bad they, in the sense that the, the, some of them are very tedious and basic and others, uh, well, they're not without value, don't get me wrong, but they put you to sleep frequently. So that being said, when you get this software, you're going to want to jump in and use it. And just like the approach that I used for your first setups of other softwares, it's going to be similar here in the sense that we want to do a quick start, get it going and get moving sort of guide and fill in our gaps mentally about what we don't understand at a later point to be able to continue to run. So let's start a campaign because that is the clearest way to see the path of functionality in this software. So when we do that, you can see on the left side here, I have it grayed out, but I have categories basically. And those categories have campaigns. So in this case, I'm gonna make a campaign called test one. And I'm gonna create a new category and it's gonna be my test projects. And I'm going to click OK. And now the diagram editor comes up. OK? And what we see is it starts with simple diagrams. And the simpler the diagram, think of it like this. You know, you need to have the content to actually support this type of backlinking on your site. You also need to be an established website. If your website is brand new, you're under three months or up to three months, even six months, I would avoid using this software. When you go through the wizard process, it will actually ask you that because it will try to tone down the options available to you through the wizard. And that is so you don't overdo it, but chances are you're gonna overdo it regardless. So my advice is, you know, with the, for this software, you need to at least, you know, have a, solid established website for six months before you can begin with this. A year is obviously much better and once you've, you're established with some good content, a little search engine presence, this is going to go a long way for you because this tool works well. The results are solid and we can look at some of the campaigns and start to get a feel of the complexity. High quality web 2.0 link groups are not the only type of groups that can be used as tier one. This, use this diagram to increase the number of RF, referring domains of your target URL. Very informative in how the diagrams are actually gonna work, okay? Something I like. Pro, natural diversity boost. Use this diagram in middle age and established websites. Create natural link profiles with high DA backlink sources. So what they are doing here is lending the insight about understanding your ecosystem. 
fitting into what what should be the right thing for you. And they've got some really good stuff. So, you know, you want to be careful. Like, ah, here's a nice one too. Video ranking, SEO expert, YouTube ranker. Okay, if you're trying to rank YouTube videos. So they got some really good things in here for you to really, you know, take a look and read. Now, this is a mega campaign, okay? Because you, you can see that the more complex the diagram is an indicator of what it's going to do in terms of size. But, hey, let's select this one. Once the basic account creation process completes, this dialogue will launch. But this campaign is not saved until you at least save a draft. We can't create yet because it won't allow us to get through the final creation process until everything is complete. And basically, what it does here, it's going to give us all of our resources on the left-hand side that are involved in this diagram. And you'll see some are grayed out here. Like, you can't read this well. It's social bookmarking and... I can't even read that, but not everything is included in every campaign necessarily. The one that we chose has different options. And you can experiment and take a look at different ones and back out of this and select a different one. But we get our basic options here, and we're going to start. We've got our money site. We've got our keywords. We've got all of our blogs, and you can see we have to, we're going to have to fill out well, quite a few here, 20. 20 web 2.0 blog forms now different dialogues um, different diagrams are going to give you different quantities for these individual segments that you're going to need to fill out multiple multiple that fields of information okay these are all of the types of postings that are included in this diagram so just to be clear about that and that's why, you know, sort of fishing around a lot of these extra tabs and things can seem confusing. But we're on the fast track approach. We want to get set up and running. So we want to get our list of URLs in here. And I suggest that you use a list and avoid your primary domain name. We don't want .com. We want, you know, something like, you know, let's, we're going to use fitness just as a, just as an example. Fitness and Actually, this is the same URL, but we maybe want, you know, things to different resources that we have on our site. So I'm just doing two, but I suggest, you know, the best results come with quantity, especially with something like this. You want like they'll have like 10 URLs in here. You don't want to use your main URL by itself. Okay, that's later on when you're already established your metric in the in the ecosystem and you've been running like three months of campaigns or more you start to you can start to add your primary url in with all of your other urls and that when you use uh hrefs here when you're tracking your own stats for your website, you have the UR factor, and that really is just how many backlinks go to your primary domain name. So if it goes down, you know, too much, it's not really going to impact you. It doesn't mean you're really going down, but rather that your backlinks to other articles are going up, and that's not a bad metric. You really want that. So having a high URL, UR value, uh, is not going to be, you know, is not something where you look to hit the top. Now, what we're going to need is keywords. So for the things that you're posting, your primary keywords are going to go in here. And you want to use a nice, healthy list. I suggest you have about 30 nice keyword primary phrases. Now, genetic keywords, there was a list in here. I had a problem with the video. And I had them re-recording this segment, so I cleared it out. But this was full of things like, click here, learn more. And it's a pretty healthy list of like 20 generic keyword phrases that are going to become anchor text. Okay? So what I suggest is you clear all of this out of here. Okay? And avoid that pattern. 
because look a lot of people are using these softwares and those generic keywords they're in every software in one form or another some have a longer list or shorter list but everybody's got click here learn more etc etc avoid those patterns of detection and if you don't have hrefs you should be getting at least a basic service so you could do use the keyword tool you need this feature so I want to know what's the best phrases on Google for fitness training because that's what my thing is about okay so now let's give this just a second here little patience now I got a super list of all the phrases related to you know fitness training and those phrases should be related to my primary keyword phrases so then what I want to do maybe and this is just a, an added bonus is you can come over here and export this to a CSV and once you get it out you can cut delete all of the columns take the final column of output of just the keywords and slap like 50 50 of the top phrases, generic keyword phrases that are related to your primary phrases right in here, okay? Avoid branded keyword searches because you're supposed to be simulating the ecosystem that someone else is backlinking to you with a related phrase to your blog article. So I avoid branding. You know, there are certain scenarios, but my general advice, which is going to fit like 95% of the people out there or more, is avoid branded keyword searches, okay? And I don't even mess around with partial, partial keyword matches. We want to get going. So now, in this campaign, we have one strategy and we have strategy two. And so we're going to have to repeat the process here. And you see, here's the generic keywords, okay? Get rid of that. Do the same thing in strategy one that you put in, into strategy two, and then we're good. You can like tinker around with some of these things, like if you like bold keywords is always good. Uh, I'm not, you know, a, a big fan of italic, but maybe we could go five percent. Okay, bold is good because Google likes bold anchor text okay now let's move on to our blogs and this gentlemen is where the action really is going to happen here they have some nice tools for automation but what we want to do is follow the sort of guidelines I've covered in the other video so let me touch on that a little bit here in this video for those that are new and following along most critically for us is going to be the web 2.0 blogs and we're going to be putting our articles into here our titles are going to go into here and these have tools to help us spin that and make that work but understanding that what we're doing is let me go back to the baker's example like all of these blog sites about baking and baking bread they are well backlinked to each other and to give you a very simple example that you can understand is that someone might be posting a recipe for how to make brujunta and but there's some common problem with the process and the baking and rather than writing a whole other article concerning how to resolve that issue they will backlink with anchor text to the primary blog on someone else's site that you can learn more about that over there and they focus on their recipe so just so you sort of understand the mechanic that is being read and understood in the pattern that Google and other search engines are going to detect and what we are doing in this process is simulating that so we want to be another blog about something and in this case we're using fitness and that it's referencing with anchor text very important that those that anchor text are the keyword phrases that we are trying to push page ranking up for that's going to go into here so i don't really know if i have any let's just uh
let's just look something up maybe let's find a blog uh, life fit blog gng fitness okay this guy's got the basic blog format looks like a lot of those baking sites I was showing in the other videos and I have no relationship to these guys I just pulled them up randomly and let's just say I say yeah this is this is my content because I'm promoting my blog about fitness equipment boy this is not a very fast moving website I was really hoping to just grab some text that I can if we can make it to the if we can make it to our objective okay okay let's just say this is my site and I've got like hey I've got a whole bunch of blog articles on here. So what I want to do is I want to I want to take all my blog articles. Ah, look at that. I want to take all my blog articles and look for the purposes of this example. Let's just let's just say this is my whole whole article just for the sake of our setup. And now I'm I want to put this in here. And they've got a built-in free spinner for Spintax. Spintax creates the variations of this by creating, you know, interchangeable words. And let's just take a look at that. So we see in the brackets here that this now becomes not only do you, but would you, does, does one, and tries to put together some basic language because even though there's, 20 blog articles for us to fill out here that's going to be far more each one what we're trying to do is create a unique post by creating multiple variations however as i indicated i have my spin rewriter in here which i feel they are the top if you're going to use a third party ipi but in my spin tax video which i suggest you take a look at I'm not using, I'm not, I'm no longer really relying on these sort of third party APIs. I am using ChatGPT. So I'm just going to just show this very briefly. I'm not going through the process. If it ever launches here, log in. Chat PT, GPT 3, 4, 3, and 4, powerful tools, okay? And what you want is the AI PRM uh, Google Chrome extension. It's free. You could just Google it, you add it, and then you get all of these prompts that have pre-configured information that you don't have to tell uh, Chat GPT in such great detail what you want. And one thing they've got here is they've got some new spin tax prompts, okay? And these are much better than using these other uh, third-party ones because the, the key core element of what makes this work is its ability to understand and interpret human language and what we're asking for and the intent. And so when you put an article and generate your spin tax with these prompts, you're going to get something that's not going to lose its meaning, its actual meaning in the creation of the actual blog content. So my advice is avoid these now. Use the chat GPT. Now, this setup with this software, you're going to put some time into these campaigns because you know, this is like creating a money robot campaign times 10 in this involvement. And you want to really, you know, do a nice job to have 20 different articles that you have with nice spin tags created with ChatGPT3. Once you've got that, 
This gives you the can give you possible. Oh, we didn't put any keywords. So what we want when based on if we had entered keywords, this will actually generate our titles for us, so that we get some nice variation. But if you're really smart, you want to really take a look at that copy and paste those titles out put them into a notepad and look at what it's doing what the what the possibilities are you start to develop an eye for it and you want to make things that you know again avoiding patterns as much as possible and chat gpt can help you with that but that this video is not about that it's about basically getting through these particular pieces of the setup but you're going to have to go through those steps. You want to take your time because when this campaign runs, it's going to be a winner. Okay? You're going to have 20. Now, not all of them, uh, when you select diagrams, they generally don't go up this high often. But that's what makes this one a good one because this is really going to give us a high volume of Web.20 blogs, which in my opinion, the most important thing. Now, in the authority links here, you know, you're going to have a both profile and a bio, and you're going to do it here. And what I suggest is that you create a bio, whether you're using a real one or not, and do the same thing. Use spin tax from ChatGPT. And I will just use the same one for the most part many times. Or if you feel you can generate a couple of variations, all the better. The further you take the amount of variations with your entire setup, the better the result. But I find that these things are less impactful and that you can, and because they're going to go on platforms by themselves, uh, I don't put a, uh, as much a heavy stock on it. So putting the time to create all individual profiles when you could just do one or two good ones and have some really good spin tax, that's enough, you know. And, and very similar you know between that and authority links we go to social bookmarking I treat this just like the blogs sometimes you know I will put less and a lead in you know you can actually look there's some pretty creative things you can do here I'm not getting into the details but like sometimes I'll create a spin tax of ending ending statements to you know to learn more you can visit me here at visit us here at you know XYZ and it's really a spin tax of varying things at the end while I have one generic thing but for the most part I follow the a lot of times I just put what I'm putting in the blog content in here as much will fit same thing same thing with the PDF I take the same approach okay same approach with the wiki the article goes in here spin tax I use the same ones that I used in the web.20 blogs so i'll take number i'll take number 15 and when i'm over here i'm putting number 15 with whatever with whatever number i can match it to and i just keep moving through and create the same ones so you don't get you know don't get bogged down with that you know these things so much because their impact is more short term and if you're not having this intense indexing service where they're all going to go up overnight, you know, they're not going to, it's not going to have an adverse effect for you. What the main thing is that we want is the blogs, okay? And we're going to just sort of follow that process. Now here, you're not going to use a, unless, you know, when you get advanced, you want to use a URL shortener, but I see no reason to do it because we're not indexing here. So, you know, we just want to let it, whatever gets indexed naturally in this process, that's going to be enough for us. Any indexing we're going to do, we're going to do outside with the final list using GSA search engine indexer. Now, what we want to do here is just save our draft because we cannot create this project until it's complete and it would tell us you need to fill out X, Y, Z and keep going until we filled out. You cannot omit anything that's in the diagram even if you uncheck it on the left hand side it will still force you to go through the process now what i want to do is let's look at an existing setup this is not the system that i run campaigns on this particular computer that i'm remoted into i have all the softwares that i use on it but i just basically use this system for conducting test scenarios and uh 
you know, just running small tests for campaigns. So I don't really have a lot of things, but what I want to do is let's look at let's look at one of the campaigns that I ran previously, if it will let us. Oh, that's right. You have to duplicate the campaign. And once you duplicate it, it's considered a new campaign. It hasn't run yet. And so now I can take a look at what I had set up in here. And this was a smaller diagram, so there was much, much less involved here. Okay? Just Web 2.0 blogs and the URL shortener. Now, is that because of what I have said? No. Ah. Okay. And that, that's all that was contained in this particular diagram. Okay? And so it has a little, you know, doesn't have all the, the additional fields. But here, let's take a look at the end result. We can see here, you know, how I have different content for each blog. Okay? And you'll see I have like heading one text in there, you know, that I want to bold a certain phrase on the in every article. I mix it up a bit. Let's look at another one. If this system will respond here, what's going on? Let me pause the video. I seem to be losing connection with the remote system. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. Okay, and like I said, this is what it looks like after you've got that spin tax. And these originally, when I did this, this was a while back, these were just experiment tests. I just used either the basic spinner or I would, and I would alternate maybe between that and spin rewriter. But just so you get a sense that you actually see what the physical content is, because this is sucking a little memory, so let's be patient for a second. And just so you know, like a lot of these things like blog subdomain name, blog name, sometimes, oh, sorry, had a technical glitch and the phone ringing three times in a row. But I just wanted to give you the sense of the visual of seeing what it looks like when it's filled in. Now, these fields down here, like image URL, YouTube video URL, I don't use the YouTube video URL because if you look here, this text that I have in here, this is YouTube video. And in fact, I'm using Spintax to rotate several YouTube videos and embed them right into the post. And just a good tip, if you have a video associated with your blogs or your client and you have videos that you can rotate throughout these blog posts, that's what you want to do. You want to put the video in and even rotate videos because the whole article is being spun to try to create a unique post every time. So likewise, if you can rotate several different videos into different posts, that is a home run because don't forget, Google owns YouTube and Google loves YouTube. So we want to exploit that as much as possible. As far as the image URLs go, you can, on your website, Let's just pick somebody here and let's look at his blog and and he's got you know you want to you want to put this image you want to copy the image address make sure that your image is viewable as a URL link okay I don't think we need this little bit of usually you don't get that at the end. That should be all we need. That's something that carried from there. Click. Now you could take that URL for that image and put it in here. And you can you could put a list. You could tell it random, beginning or end, and the number that you want to do. And this is really good to augment not only the the post but if I'm trying to promote a range of blogs on my site or my client site with the backlinking process and they have good image tagging, alternate text, you know, alternative text titles that contain good information of keywords and search phrases that turn up in Google search results.
just like these do. You see that we get the image. There, make no mistake, there is image content. Like, see this, images for baking bread? These are showing up because they have information in those images, and that helps build up your image uh, relationship for searches along with the whole process of backlinking, okay? Google Embedded Source URL, I usually don't mess around with that. You can think about, you know, investigating that a little more if you want to go down that road. I never do that. I simply do my image URL or, you know, I and in this particular case, because of the way I format my articles, I don't take advantage of this. However, you may decide you don't want to put your videos in in that fashion and you put a list in here. And what I suggest is that you also always preview the end result because you can click here and get a preview and you can see something's not right there with our image and you want to make sure that everything works and loads okay now sometimes in these test mode the image doesn't load and so you have to actually you know you want to be checking this when this system starts to run what's going to happen is down here in the bottom behind this dialogue all the information of what's running is going to tell you right here and you're going to see urls you're going to be able to go and click click up here to your view submitted urls but we don't have any and because this is a clone project but if i click this one which was the original, they shove an ad in our face. Once this starts to run and you get a few URLs, what you want to do is take one of them, you know, or, or more than one, copy it out and load it up in your web browser and look at the end result because just like anything, don't go crazy. It's This program isn't going to run fast anyway, so what you want to do is, you know, let it have its opportunity. When it first begins to run, What's going to happen here is that this is going to uh, do its setup process. That means it's going to go out and it's going to start creating the accounts and then logging into those email accounts that it creates. And it's going to, you know, accept, you know, the, the follow-up email so we can log in and then create the post. So... In your initial first day or even second day, you're not going to get a lot of posts. You've got to be patient to allow it to go through that process. And also, you might find, like, if, if your uh, proxy, uh, proxy IP addresses start to get banned from the heavy rate, you want to take a pause. So you, can, you can just go down here to the stop button and stop it. And... Let's see what happens when I click start. Well, this is already a run project, so let, let, let me see what happens here. Let me see if I can take this duplicate campaign, which was just so that we could look at the, the inner workings of what was set up. But let me see if I can, if it's got enough to create. Oh, okay, and it does. So now it's ready. And if I go here and attempt to run it, This is going to start to go, and then we're going to start to see some data. So let me just give this a minute. I'm going to let it run a few minutes, pause the video, and let's see what a little output starts to look like. If it even runs successfully, because this is kind of, uh, I, I must have, this is old from like almost a year ago, but let's see where it goes. Okay, so here we are. We are running, and it is running okay. And you, we can see exactly what's going on here. It's going to tell us. Ah, and look. Of course, I'm running without proxies right now, so we can see it saying here, proxy banned. Okay, see that? And that's going to happen very quickly because I'm just running this for test purposes. So let me just stop that. But this thing is very communicative. You won't have any problem understanding or interpreting what it's telling you. When things start to go wrong, stop the software. Give it a rest okay because perhaps you don't have your thread rates configured or it's going properly and it's just going too fast or you're running with a smaller amount of proxies like 10 they're going to get burned out a little bit more quick but just temporarily so 
the first day or two you want to let it get through this process where it's attempting to create accounts and then it'll start the actual posting but I don't, I don't think we'll see any yeah see we're not going to see any URLs yet because it's got to go through this whole process this software requires patience because every campaign that I have done has taken about five days and generally I've shut them off at night okay until maybe the last two somewhere in the middle but maybe the last two days where it'll just start to run smoothly and get through its process and I'll just let it go but it just depends because I've had some times where I had to pause it so this one's a little more involved and it's going to take you some more time to, to get the feel of it and be patient but when you get into that process you know you'll start to understand and give it an opportunity to get a feel of these things because you'll get a very powerful campaign with this but it's going to take you you know five days to and not to mention the preparation time of really trying to create a high quality content for the post system that we you know just went over so let me just take a pause here okay so I just restarted the application and an update launched which will happen at the start when you start the program up if there's one available so we can see the recent updates because it'll show the version the version list of updates and then once we close that out the program will start up again now one thing I just want to point out in the settings about the uh, uh, proxies and actually more specifically about the capture breaker when I initially started using this software I either brain farted and didn't see the X evil option because my assumption was <coughs> at the time this only used third party or this was added after because I've had this software mm, maybe close to two years now but <coughs> originally I just ran it with the two capture third party API and it ran fine it was not expensive two capture is very cheap so you know even on a on a big campaign with 20,000 posts uh, this works very well just using third party API so if you don't have X evil you know but if you want to keep your cost down to a minimum you know in the long run X evil will really you know help with that <coughs> because you know you can use that that as your first option and if it doesn't solve the capture it can fall back to to two capture and of course this makes your campaigns run a little faster because you don't need to have as many retries on a single service because generally if it doesn't get it on the first one or by the second one the most it's not going to get it at all so now one thing we didn't see in this video is about the accounts up here in the top left hand side and that's because we didn't actually create a campaign from scratch and that will trigger automatically in the process and force you to give an account name to associate with the campaign and you those accounts are associated with profiles and we'll actually see that in the next video when I do the wizard because in that video I will actually create a real campaign in the process for that and then we'll see some of those pieces but one thing about this software is it won't let you make a mistake it will prompt you to complete every piece and get you through it and that's one nice thing about this that if you don't know anything you can kind of just sort of fish your way through this and figure it out and I'll let the prompts just sort of walk you through it with just sort of the basic understanding that you have of how these types of softwares might work that being said this video is already pushing close to an hour so I want to break this into two parts and cover the wizard in part two which we'll follow up with shortly that's it guys thanks for watching and as always remember if you found these videos because you're doing research on backlinking you do your own SEO or even require SEO services and you realize this isn't for you that these types of softwares and what's involved to learn them and get involved in this process is beyond your capability time or expense in terms of what you're going to really require to 
to have a system that's dedicated for running campaigns and various softwares, then head over to seodepot.com where we've got some great packages available and offer SEO services if required. And we can really help and steer you in the right direction affordably to help you maintain your ranking through the difficult times of Google's algorithm changes. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to give the video a like and to subscribe if you want to see more great content. I'm Big Dom, and thanks again for watching.